Uh, hi guys, thank you very much for your questions. Um, and I get stuck in. The first one says, what is your wish for Christmas? Um, being a proper rugby noors that I am, my wish for Christmas is that we go and beat Bath on Boxing Day away in Bath because nothing would make me happier right now. Um, what does being captain of such a great team mean to you? Uh, it means a huge amount, to be fair. Um, a lot of work's gone into this team from everyone, staff, players, into making it uh, what it is today. And hopefully we're going in the right direction to, to building a great team that will, will win some silverware. Would you rather fight a hundred duck-sized bears or one bear-sized duck? Um, I think I'd rather fight a hundred duck-sized bears. I think. You reckon? I don't know. What would you do? If you were not a rugby player, what would you be? And if you could play any other position than back row, what would it be and why? Um, if I wasn't a rugby player, I'd probably be a mechanic. Um, my dad's a mechanic, my granddad was a mechanic with their own garage, so I'd have probably just rolled into that. Many people would say I wasn't clever enough for that, but hopefully I could get there. If I wasn't a back row, then I'd probably be a tight head because they earn the most money by far. <laughs> Got a question here from Adam Hastings. Um, is Adam Hastings your favourite Scott? And of course he is, yes. What's your favourite sport besides rugby and what do you do for fun? Uh, besides rugby, I like watching boxing quite a lot. Um, we've actually got a few boxing themed things in our training at the moment, which is nice. Um, and for fun, it is probably playing around with cars, like I mentioned in that last thing. That's my... Uh, I switch off, if you like. Who's your toughest opponent you have played with or against? Um, there's been quite a few, but one that sticks out recently um, was Albert Tuasui from London Irish. He's a, a very, very strong human, very fast, um, generally very good at rugby. Um, yeah, he was pretty tough. Three ideal dinner party guests um, one would be Guy Martin who does the random race builds and stuff I think it'd be quite nice to pick his brains on what he does um, another one would be I don't actually know David Attenborough actually um, we watch a lot of his, his documentaries that'd be pretty cool um, and finally Trying to think now. I actually don't know. I should have two. Those two will be all right. Is it green bins or black bins this week? It was green bins for us. Um, hopefully Ian Perkins put his bin out. That's a long question, this. What player, past or present, would you like to emulate in terms of skill and technique or in terms of leadership as a team captain? Also, which match would you consider to be the biggest W in a cherry and white, not just from the scoreline? Um, in terms of emulating players, in terms of skill and technique, there's, there's been a lot of skillful and technical players that I've played with. Um, I probably couldn't emulate any of them. So in terms of leadership as a, as a team captain, I always like the way that um, Tom Savage, when he was here, went about his business. And also uh, Bucko, who was my academy coach, um, that sort of leader where it's just head down, get, get your job done and, and hopefully others follow that. When you speak to referees during the game, are they generally okay with you? Um, I think so. I think we're starting to build up quite a good rapport. Haven't had any bad reports yet. Um, but when we've been, we've been going quite well in terms of the refereeing decisions around more scrums, etc. at the moment. So um, they tend to be on your side if, if those parts of your game are going well. So yeah, I think so. Do you follow American football? And if so, who is your favourite team? Um, there's quite a few lads of us that follow American football and They've been on at me for a long time to pick my team, which 
invariably changes because I think I just quite like watching Red Zone on a Sunday to be fair. Um, so I haven't got one yet, no. As captain, where do you think are gloss most improvable areas? Just don't tell other teams and great job season to date. Thank you very much. Um, where do I think our most improvable areas are? I think we can get better at seeing out the end of games. That's not just a reaction from the from the Wasps game, but that's probably happened a few times um, in my Gloucester career that we've either lost or come close to losing in the last 10 minutes. So it's something we've talked about a lot as a leadership group and hopefully will change moving forward. You're a great captain, so pleased you're ours. What do you think makes a good captain? Um, I don't know. Um, thank you very much for the, for the compliment. I think a good captain is kind of what I said in one of those other questions that there's, there's times where you have to get riled up and, and lose the plot and do that sort of thing. But there's also times when you need to have an arm around a shoulder. There'll be a few times in games where I think they need an arm around their shoulder there or someone needs a bit of a G up. And I think knowing your squad's a good way to go about it. I think if you know your squad as a captain, you know how to make people do, do the right things at the right time. Which player in the Prem is the best at bending the laws to their advantage? There's a few of them. Um, definitely not me. There's obviously a lot of back rowers out there that that get their stuff down the breakdown, but there's probably probably one or two props um, that get always get their own way. Someone like Dan Cole at Leicester, whether he's doing right or wrong, always seems to come out on the on the right side of a ref. And I suppose that's down to one being hugely experienced and, and two having as many England caps as he has. Um, so yeah, he, he's always on the right side. Do you have a favourite referee? No, I, I think they're all great. So we'll, uh, we're friends of all of them, hopefully. What are your favorite things to do outside of rugby? Kind of said that, it's playing with cars. That would, might do. Favorite rugby moment during your playing career? Um, on a personal note, it'd be, it'd be recently, obviously running out as, as captain at Twickenham for England. That was, that was a huge moment for me. and. Something will stick with me for a long, long time. Did Henry ask you to go out to Amptill? Uh, no, Amptill was, I don't know if people know, Amptill's my home club. Um, and it's great to see them going so well. And a few ex-Gloucester boys up there doing really well as well, whether it's playing or coaching. Um, but no, I won't be going back there anytime soon, hopefully. Do you remember getting tap tackled by Owen Woodruff in year nine? Uh, I've had a few bangs on the head since then, but I do remember we played very little rugby in my school. Um, so it is more than likely, yes, I did get tap tackled with that. What can you say about Kirill's game? Um, what, well, what's not to like about Kirill's game? You know, how he's playing at the moment. He got our, uh, our award this week for, you know, sort of not man of the match, but the guy who puts in the most work rate, he's making as many tackles as a back rower, he's making as many carries as a back rower, and then he's having to scrummage as well. And he's, he's coming out on the right side of that with penalties. So I think his game's going great at the moment, yeah. If you had to pick a dream player, alive or dead, to play with, who would it be? Um, I would love to have been on the same pitch uh, with Richie McCaw, just purely out of out of pure awe and like in my eyes the greatest player ever. So to be on the same pitch as that would have been amazing. As captain of Gloucester, what do you say to the players before a match, and what do you ask of the players? Um, it obviously varies. What I say before the match depending on on how I think warm up's gone, how I think the week's gone, what mindset players are in. But what, what I do ask of players is to just give it their all. Don't, don't ever come off the pitch knowing you could have given a bit more. Um, and if we all get to that point, which I think we slowly are, then, then that's when the results start going your way. What were your feelings about not being selected for the Autumn Internationals despite captain in England in the summer? Has Eddie told you that you are still in with a shout of playing for England again? Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've been in contact with Eddie and was part of the 45-man the EPS squad named. Um, 
So it just wasn't part of the 34. Obviously, I was disappointed, um, but it also meant that I got to play for Gloucester in the Premiership against Exeter, which which the England boys didn't do. Um, so that was that was always a plus to it. And you know, you just know there's back row is one of the hardest positions uh, to get into. You know, look at the the embarrassment that Richie's he's got to pick from. Um, so I know what I need to work on. He's been open and honest with that, and hopefully I can keep working on that and, and see come Six Nations whatever happens. No question, just thank you. I appreciate that. Went to school with your dad. I remember he was mad on rugby then. Did you get your passion for rugby from him? Um, yeah, I think it's safe to say that if anyone knows me and my dad, that with the two closest people in the world. Um, he's even moved down to Gloucester now, so he can, I, he said that was to, to see my daughter, but I'm pretty sure it was to see me. Um, but yeah, we're, we're very close. Everything we do together is, tends to be around rugby, um, him and granddad. Um, up until recently, a granddad had come to, to all my games. So it was, um, those two together have been a huge influence on me, whether it was taking me to Amptill as a, I got photos of being tiny baby down there to, to still come into games now. <laughs> Why do hot dog dogs come in tins of eight and bread cakes in packs of six? Oh, I have absolutely no idea. Any idea? No idea. <laughs> what is your big biggest pre-match superstition or routine? Um, well, anyone that's, that's played with me will, will know the story about my boxer shorts. Um, I've worn the same pair of boxer shorts since I was 17 for every match that I've played in. Um, they've had a few, a few patches and a few repairs, but yeah, it's going on, I don't know, probably well over 200 games now I've played in them. There seems to be more cohesion amongst the team how have you, George, and his team formed this? Uh, I think everyone has just wanted to get towards a common goal and realised that the biggest thing you can do is work for the team. I think in previous years we've been very individualised. Um, we've got some absolute freak individuals, but at the end of the day, I think everyone's willingness to work is for the team and they want the team to do well because ultimately if the team do well, then the individuals shine within it. Um, so I think that's been a, the main message from everyone from the start and you're starting to see that now. What is your view on the club decision not to tell fans why players are not available, whether through injury or otherwise? Fans don't need to know ins and outs, just that a player is injured or simply not available. Uh, I, I think it's good from the club that it's, you know, it's a blanket case for everyone because you might have certain cases where boys wouldn't mind saying it, but then some would. Um, also, it makes a big difference on on other teams selecting their teams. You know, we, we go into a lot of detail of individual personnel week in, week out, and I'm sure other teams do the same. So, if they know that they're injured for a long period, or you know, you can almost work out if they're going to be back or not. So, I, I think it's a good decision. Yeah. Has Eddie told you that you need to do to get back into England reckoning? Hope you and the lads have a good Christmas. I'm sure I speak for all fans when I say how proud we are of the way you have all kicked on since last season. Uh, well, thank you very much to, to start with. That's great. Um, it's nice to know that you know we're making people proud again, which is good. And um, yeah, Ed, Eddie has, has spoke to me along with Richard Cockerell about what I need to do. And um, hopefully in, in the coming months as we go into these Premiership and European blocks, I can, I can work hard and, and get myself back into that England fold. Thanks guys for all your questions. Some real good ones in there. Hopefully see you all down at King's Home on Friday night. <laughs>